big, strong man is visually more impressive than that same man when he is skinny and frail. It's just all there is to it. Now, if you don't agree with that, go to listen to another podcast. Because this is fundamental. This is a fundamental reality here. The reality of the situation is that all over the world, every human society all over the world values a big, strong man. Because a big, strong man is more useful than a little, skinny, frail man. Now, this is buried deep in the DNA. This is interpersonal relationships 101. All right? Big, strong guy comes in. He gets paid better attention to a little skinny guy. Right? Whether you want to or not. Right. Whether he's a big, stupid guy and a little skinny guy is a genius. Yep. Doesn't matter. The, the big, strong guy gets more attention. Especially at first, until he proves he's a dumbass, and then we can safely disregard him. But he still has a physical presence, and when people meet each other, when two people who don't know each other meet each other, there is some extremely old, in terms of the DNA, interactions that take place. Right? You don't know the guy. He doesn't know you. You size each other up, right? This is doesn't have to be unfriendly, but it does take place. You know, you start making judgments about this guy. You know, he walks up to you. He, he walks up to you standing up straight. He's got his chest up. He's got big shoulders, got a big neck, got traps, got arms hanging out of his shirt, got forearms that look like they've got some veins on them and size and stuff. His hips are deep. Quads fill up his pant legs, right? He makes a different impression on you than a little skinny 155-pound guy does. Now, your reception of that impression will vary with you, but nonetheless, it is true that a big, strong guy makes a different first impression on everybody than a small, frail guy does. You know, woman walks in. Same thing. Same deal. <clears throat> we respond to her physical presence. This is this is not our decision. This is just how our brains and our central nervous system are set up. Right? Right. And this is why most guys go to the gym. But they're unclear about their motivations for doing it. They know they want to be different than they are now. But what they want to be is bigger and stronger yeah they don't understand they don't, may not understand why too All you got, they you, may not understand you could, why and you could look at at the media and po like po popular culture like uh, people the the media and people lost their mind when uh these pictures of jeff bezos came out where he had, and he had to get get that much bigger right he maybe gained 20 pounds um and finally had some shoulders and some yeah. arms and people Looked like, like a human he's male. huge you know or or dave Chappelle. like have you seen dave Chappelle? yeah he got big yeah, Dave Chappelle he put on big. probably twenty or thirty pounds, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. And uh, yeah, people, you know, it's like are very impressed with that kind of a, of a transformation. Mm -hmm. They're impressed for a reason, you know. Even though yes, it, they're impressed despite the fact they don't want to be exactly. Right. That's that's what I'm talking about. They react to that. Right. They don't decide about it. They react to it. And their reactions are in the DNA. This is old. This is as old as the species. Yep. This is millions and millions of years worth of interaction between individuals of the same species. Now, this is, you know, this is not something we invented. This is not something we're responsible for creating. All we're doing is making the observation that it's there. Okay, it's there. It's there whether you want it to be or not. Okay, you may be a Harvard intellectual. You may be a 155-pound guy with a Ph.D. from Harvard in sociology. And you may think that this is just wrong, 
that you, as a 155-pound little twink, are not received the same way when you meet other people than a guy that's, you know, 5'11", 235, that's obviously benches 400. I'm sorry, but that's just, you know, we don't make decisions about these things. We react to them. Hey, guys, this time on Starting Strength Radio, we are going to talk about a real fundamental deal. After we, of course, address comments from the haters, and after we ask a Jew, we are going to talk about the difference between training for strength, which is strengthening normal human movement patterns that we use in every aspect of our lives, versus thinking about the body as separate body parts and then training those body parts separately in an attempt to accumulate a whole body workout. One of them works, and the other one doesn't. And we'll talk about that on Starting Strength Radio.